Hi folks, Doc here. Figured it was time for a new one. And after answering a bunch of questions on Facebook last night, I realized it was time for me to do a tech video. Something that was going to get into something that a lot of you aren't familiar with, which is electrical systems. And in this case, specifically, relays. Uh, relays and how they relate to your mower, how you can use them in a circuit, what they do and how they do it. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer some of those questions and make these things just a little bit more clear. Let's get at it. We'll start out by defining a relay and addressing a common misconception. Now as you all know, you've got a little gizmo under the hood of your mower that is responsible for starting your engine when you turn the key. We all call it a starter solenoid. Uh, the industry tends to refer to it as a starter solenoid, but by all technical definition it is a relay. The difference between a relay and a solenoid is as follows. A relay uses electricity to perform an electrical action. Pretty simple, right? You turn your key, the starter starts your engine, and away you go. A solenoid, by definition, uses electricity to perform a mechanical action. Uh, so, in other words, um, switching, you know, gas in a gas system or switching water in a water system. With the push of a button, you're allowing fluid to flow or to not flow, or air to flow or to not flow. Uh, by all technical definition, that is a solenoid. It's doing a mechanical action uh, via electrical power. A relay, on the other hand, uses electricity to perform an electrical action. The reason that we have a tendency to refer to your starter relay as a starter solenoid goes back to its roots. Uh, back in the day, um, a starter had the relay solenoid unit mounted directly on it. Uh, and instead of, you know, a Bendix gear or, you know, an overrun clutch or anything like that, uh, what it had was a little mechanical arm, the solenoid relay, was mounted on top and when you hit the starter switch uh, it would literally kick out the pinion gear there's your mechanical action uh, and engage the starter um, it actually served double duty because it was performing an electrical action the same as it does today in feeding the high current to the starter but it was also performing the mechanical action of kicking in and out the pinion gear to engage with your engine's flywheel uh, so that's kind of how it became known as a solenoid uh, even though these days we see that pretty rarely, although it does still occur on some types of engines, it's just a lot less common than it used to be. So what does a relay do and how does it work? A relay is an electromagnetic switch. Uh, so instead of you using your finger to push a button or to throw a switch, it uses electromagnetism. Um, your basic relay consists of a little electromagnetic coil and an armature and a couple of contacts, basically. When you energize the trigger coil, it, uh, it pulls the plate into the contacts and makes the connection on the output side. The most common use for a relay is to either use one circuit to switch another circuit uh, when that becomes necessary, uh, or to allow a low current switch to handle a high current circuit. Uh, the starter is a very good example. An automotive starter, for example, can draw a couple of hundred amps. Now, there's no switches out there that will happily let you put a couple of hundred amps through them on a regular basis uh, without burning up the contacts. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you were to try to use a regular, good old-fashioned, off-the-radio shack shelf push button to try and start your car, it would last about a half second and nuke itself. Uh, so what you end up with uh, is you use a relay, or a starter solenoid as we've come to know them, and these relays have very large copper contacts in them. Uh, and a big connection bar and that can handle the high current. So your ignition switch, your push button, whatever you're going to use only has to handle the trigger coil side which is a very very low draw. You know quite often much less than an amp. So you can use small wiring and a small switch to control a big circuit. Let's take a moment here to have a look at a relay basically an inside view of exactly how it's set up to work. Uh, these two terminals here uh, 85 and 86 on our standard relay, we'll get to standard relay wiring in a minute, uh, operate the electromagnetic trigger coil. Um, when you energize this coil, it pulls the plunger into operation. So you've got a contact bar here on a return spring. When you energize the coil, it pulls it. And you know when you take the energy away from the coil, the spring brings it back. So what you've got here is your two main contacts. These are your high current contacts. And you've got your contact bar here. 
So whatever this circuit is, let's call it a starter for argument's sake, doesn't do anything until this trigger coil is activated. There's no direct connection between these terminals and these terminals, just an electromagnetic coil. So you energize the coil circuit, it brings the contact bar into place, makes contacts between terminal 30 and 87, and energizes your high current circuit. It's worth noting, and I'll bring you over to the terminal demarcation in a minute here, that the polarity, generally speaking, between these two terminals doesn't matter. Um, you can energize it either way, positive, negative, negative, positive, whatever the case may be, energizes the coil, brings the contact bar into position. Here's your basic terminal demarcation for a standard 5-pin, 12-volt automotive relay. I didn't come up with these numbers. I don't know why they are the way they are. Don't ask me. I can't answer you. Terminals 85 and 86 are the trigger coil. Again, polarity is unimportant. Absolutely doesn't matter which is positive and which is negative. Uh, terminal 30, 87, and 87A are your output terminals. And again, the numbers don't make any kind of sense. Don't worry about it. Um, polarity, as it were, doesn't matter here. You can use it to trigger a positive circuit or a negative circuit. Um, you get what you give. Positive in, positive out. Negative in, negative out. So the standard standard demarcation, the way that I like to do it, because the in and out don't technically matter. You can use an in as an out or an out as an in, and the one just becomes the other. Uh, for the sake of keeping things clear in my mind, I generally tend to use 30 as the in, just so I know where I'm going without having to give it a second thought. Uh, certain circuits will dictate that you have to do something else, but in the meantime, that's a pretty good standby for your basic relay circuit. Now, with 30 being in, 87 is your normally open power out. And I'll get to the 87A normally closed thing in a second. Uh, so 30 in, 87 out. Looking over here, these are marked load on the diagram. Uh, so you've got your feed from the battery, goes nowhere, energize the coil, bang goes out to your starter or your lights or whatever you're going to use it for. Again, you're switching a high current using a low current switch. Now the difference between normally open and normally closed. When a switch is in an off position, that's considered normally open. There's no contact over here. Now normally closed is a function you would use to have a circuit come on when the switch is off or have a circuit go off when the switch is turned on. There are a few examples of why you would want to do this and uh, I'm going to illustrate one of those uses uh, in another video. In the meantime, it can be diagrammed as follows. You've got contact 87 over here with the load. That would be you're normally open. Now, if you can picture another pair of contacts right here, and I'll color these in black just so you can see the difference. Now, for terminal 30, that'll just be tied in like so. So, power comes in, it's available at both terminals. Now, this one here would be 87A. You're normally closed. Now, you'll see that in its resting position with no power applied to the coil, this contact bar is making contact between 30 and 87A. So what essentially happens here is if power is supplied to terminal 30, 87A is always getting the supply with it off. When you turn it on, the contact bar moves up and makes contact between 30 and 87 and breaks contact with 87A. So now with the switch on, 87A is no longer energized. That's the difference between normally open and normally closed. Uh, for the purposes of your basic wiring, for most of the circuits that you're probably going to play with, like lights or big set of air horns or your starter, you really... Contact bar, I wipe that out. <laughs> Not paying attention. You really don't need to worry about the normally closed position. Focusing on the main part of the board here, what I have here is a basic wiring diagram for a circuit that involves a relay. Uh, now again, the load in this particular case can be lights, uh, it can be a big honking stupid air horn, um, it can be your starter, um, it could be a winch for argument's sake, you know, anything that would require a large current draw. So what we have here is your battery, 
and in a standard 12 volt negative ground application, the negative terminal is grounded to the chassis of the vehicle. Now, what we need to do here is we need to use a relay to switch that big circuit using a small switch or a button. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, again, small wiring and a small switch to control a large circuit. And I've got small and large marked on the board here, basically to indicate the gauge of the wire. When you've got you know, a large draw circuit, you need heavy gauge wiring. Um, and in the case of the switch or the button, you, know, you can get away with really light gauge stuff with no problem at all. So your battery is grounded. Now, looking back over here, you see that this trigger coil also needs to be grounded on one side for it to work. So we're just going to ground terminal number 85. So you would just literally take a wire and run it straight to ground from terminal 85. Terminal 86 is the other side of the trigger coil. And that's going to get your switch or your button. So when you push the switch or the button, power flows into the relay and actuates the trigger coil. What that leaves us with are the high current side contacts. <clears throat> Obviously to the load side makes sense. You're just going to run a heavy gauge wire from terminal number 87 to your lights or to your horn or whatever it is you need. Uh, terminal number 30, fuse it. Always. You don't want to set fire to anything. Anytime you make an electrical circuit, it really, really should be fused. You never know when you're going to have a short. And there's going to be enough current passing through here to roast some marshmallows if things go sideways. So you'd run a large gauge cable through a fuse that's sized for the load. Uh, so if you've got 10 amps worth of lights, throw a 15 amp fuse in there and you're good and you're covered. And that goes into terminal number 30. And then of course your load needs to be grounded on its opposite side too. Uh, in the case of lights, for example, uh, it doesn't really matter which side of the light you feed positive, which side you feed negative. Uh, LEDs, it does matter. Standard incandescent lights, it doesn't. So there you have your basic wiring circuit for anything that's going to involve a relay. I'll let you look at that for a second and then we'll get to some stuff on the bench. Here I have a 12 volt regulated power supply that I'm going to use for demonstrating, although in this, you know, in your case it's going to be your mower battery or your car battery or whatever you're working on. And uh, I'm just going to connect it here and show you on the multimeter that it's a little over 12 volts, uh, which is right for a 12 volt DC electrical system. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate energizing the trigger coils. So we're going to tie into terminal 85 and 86 and if you listen closely, you can hear the contact bar being pulled into place and dropped out of place. Same thing on this 5-pin. And then we're going to try it again, grounding the case on the starter relay. You can tell just by listening to it that it's a lot heavier duty than these little 30-amp units. Next, I'm going to smash together a little circuit to visually demonstrate what's going on. Okay, for our first practical demonstration, I've got a small marker light. In this particular case, it was off a motorcycle, a crappy old push button, my power supply, and a four pin relay. Um, I've got it wired as per the wiring diagram I showed you on the board. Obviously, I don't really have any heavy cables here because it's not necessary for a small load for demonstrating, but it is wired as per the diagram. Uh, so I've got the positive coming off on this particular case, the power supply or the battery, uh, through the push button into terminal number 86 on the relay. Terminal number 85 on the relay goes back to ground. So that's your trigger coil. When you push the button, it energizes the coil. Then you've got the power feed coming in from the power supply through a fuse to terminal number 30. And then terminal number 87, the normally open, goes out to the light. And the light, of course, goes back to ground. So we're going to switch on the power supply here. And Real simple. Okay, so having done that, I'm going to scab in a 5-pin relay and show you the terminal number 87A, which is normally closed, and how you can use a relay to reverse the operation of a circuit and turn something on when the switch is off and turn something off when the switch is on. So I'm going to wire the trigger coil as per usual. I'm going to tie the light into terminal number 87A and back to 30 with the power. As soon as I energize the circuit, the light comes on. When I push the button, the light goes off. So I've just reversed the operation of the circuit. Switch off, circuit on, switch on, circuit off. And then next, I'm just going to show you one of these big solenoids doing the same thing. 
Okay, so what I've done here is I've uh, essentially repl replicated your basic starting circuit uh, on your lawn tractor. Uh, we're going to pretend that this light is your starter. You know, obviously I needed a visual load to demonstrate. And this push button could be a push button or it could be a key switch or whatever the case may be. And I've got your three pin starter relay here. Again, remember that the four pin simply has a chassis ground, you know, on a terminal as opposed to bolted on. Now, the first thing you're probably going to notice here is that I've moved the fuse to the low current side. And for some reason in starting applications, and it's probably because it would require a ridiculously large fuse and the load changes and the wires are less susceptible to damage being these heavy gauge cables, um, anytime you see it, you know, in a car or in a lawn tractor, or whatever the case may be, on starting circuits specifically, uh, you see the low current side fused. So I've moved the fuse to the low current side, uh, and uh, that would be that would be the trigger coil side of the relay. So I'm just going to power up the power supply here, and I'm going to push the button, and you're going to notice that absolutely nothing happens. And again, that's because I've used a three-pin relay, and this must be bolted to something to ground it out. So in this particular case, we're just going to bolt it to the fender. Boom, presto bingo, Bob's your uncle. And there you have it. Now in the process of troubleshooting solenoids and starters and stuff like that, you know, you'll often have somebody ask you, you know, if you jump the solenoid as a test. And for those of you that aren't real familiar with what exactly that means, uh, you'll have to use a heavier gauge cable than this for a starter, otherwise it'll kill something. But if the trigger coil in your relay has gone bad, you know, you're turning the key and absolutely nothing is happening, you know, or maybe it's clicking and nothing's happening and you can't figure out what's going on, just very simply jump the two large terminals and you'll see that that will bypass the internal connection and you can test your starter from there and determine whether your relay's gone bad or your starter's gone bad or figure it out and never forget that fuse. So there you have it, your basic starting circuit. Well that about puts the wraps on my little primer on relays and the associated wiring. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, hit me up and I'll do my best to address them and help you out in any way, shape or form that I can. Thank you for watching, sharing and subscribing to Moose Rockets Garage on YouTube. And uh, remember that you can hit up sulfurcitydesign.com for these awesome graphics and t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. And I just want to point out that the Sulfur City Design website is being reconfigured and uh, if you go to the Sprockets Garage page on Facebook I've got a temporary link for you if you want to get any of these goodies in the short term. Uh, so once again, till next time, take care.